Hey guys, this is Mia and today I will be doing a how to sketch for a watercolor painting. This video was requested and I thought it was a good idea since I always pre-sketch before I paint on all my videos. This person specifically wanted to know how to sketch specifically for a food illustration but I have to say it's practically the same steps that I use for any painting so this would also work on any subject matter depending on the style that you're going for. I have here two methods of how I sketch. I have to tell you the truth though, I'm not actually that confident sketching in front of the camera so I was a little bit camera shy and I'm not as confident with my sketch as I am with my painting so bear with me and hopefully you get something out of it. Hopefully by now you guys know that I'm attempting to draw macarons and for the first method, I am sketching on my sketchbook. The key is for any watercolor drawing is that you want to draw as lightly as possible. So I personally don't want uh, my outline to stand out too much from my pencil marks. So this is how I do it. By no means that is the only way to do it. This is just my preference um, according to my style on how I paint my watercolor illustrations. As you can see here, I erase a lot and the point is to get as clean lines as possible. So I don't want my lines to look thick and bulky, I want it to look light and very thin so I can hide it behind my painting. That way I can control what line I want to show when I paint and I do that with my watercolors instead of the pencil. If I want to outline a little bit with my pencil, if I want something really fine, I can do it over the painting, not under, because you can't erase the pencil after you've painted over it. The second method I'm going to show you is a sketch on watercolor paper. The first thing I did was measure out the dimension of the actual painting that I want to paint and I just trace the size of the watercolor paper so that way you get a rough idea on how big you want your final painting to be. You can do the rough sketch on any piece of paper or in this case I'm using my sketchbook that I can rip off. So basically your sketch needs to be drawn on a loose piece of paper that we can trace afterwards. Whenever I first sketch, I always try to get the basic area of the subject matter. I do this very roughly just to get the size of the subject first, then I build slowly layer upon layer. I'm not going to lie though, I had such a tough time getting the form of the macros for this one. This video is only sped up, I did not edit this so you can see how much corrections I did for this particular one. I used a reference image from Pinterest. Uh, I really like the composition and the angle of the pictures so I decided to paint this but um, yeah it wasn't too easy. Overall it took me roughly 45 minutes to sketch this one since I just kept going back and forth because I wasn't getting the form right. So just keep working on it until you're happy with it. I can also be a little bit heavy handed on the pencil strokes if you're doing this method because the sketch doesn't have to be too clean as long as you get the idea of the outline since we are going to trace this later on the watercolor paper. I can't emphasize how important it is to be accurate as you can in this sketching phase because that will be the basic form of your painting. If your sketch is wonky, well, your painting will also be wonky. I heard someone say you can only paint as well as you draw and this quote really stuck with me and it's very true. That is how I remind myself to keep practicing to draw and not only paint. Shading and colors can only hide bits of unstructured drawings but if you draw something correctly, no matter how simple, it doesn't matter if you don't paint or shade it afterwards, a good drawing will always stand out on its own. 
even though I enjoy painting much more than drawing, I still try to push myself to draw more because drawing for me is basically learning the fundamentals of art, which takes much more effort for me to do so. But it's satisfying in the end because there's really nothing to lose when you learn something new. It's actually quite cringy watching this over again of me erasing over and over just to get the basic form. I tend to not be as careful when I do this method because I know it doesn't matter if I erase too much or if I press too hard with the pencil. Whereas on the watercolor paper, depending on the thickness and the quality of the watercolor paper, if you press too hard with pencil and keep erasing it, you can actually damage the watercolor paper quite easily. But that is exactly why I tend to be more careless with this step. At some point of sketching this, I actually got a little bit frustrated and I left it for a while. I find that if you can't get the sketch correct for the first time, leave it for a couple of hours or even leave it for a few days. Um, just take a step back and forget about it first. It might sound like you've given up, but this is so important. This method works so well and you will be refreshed and it'll be much easier for you to see where your mistakes are. Just like studying anything else, when you're stuck, take a break first and go back to it. I learned this from practicing music and it's so valuable. There are so many old sketches that I drew and when you go back to it in a few days, things just start making more sense. Finally, I'm quite happy with the form at this stage. So I did the same thing as I did on the first method, which is cleaning out the lines by erasing it and going over it with pencil again. Um, so I know which areas I have to trace exactly. You don't want your pencil scratchings to be on the thick side so it doesn't confuse you when you trace it later but you do want to define it um, so it's quite dark. By the way, I apologize for my nasal voice throughout this video. I'm sick and my nose and ears are blocked at the moment so I hope you guys just bear with me for a little bit longer. Yay, so we're almost done. Um, now it's time to trace. Here I used a tracing tablet which is very handy but if you don't have this on hand you can also trace on the window as long as you can get the light um, to go through the back of your sketch and you are able to see the sketch behind your watercolor paper it'll be fine. Here you adjust the position of the sketch on the paper and once you're happy with the position go ahead and tape the paper in place so it doesn't move around and mislead you when you're tracing. Um, and using a hard pencil, trace as lightly as you can over on your watercolor paper. Don't trace the areas um, where you have the fine details, just the outline. You can create the details later while you paint. And we're done with the sketches. I haven't painted this, but maybe I'll do it for an upcoming video so you can see how the lines will be covered up. And um, that's it. Those are my methods on how I do my sketches before I paint with watercolor. As you can see, using the second method will give you finer, lighter lines. Of course, you can also achieve this with the first method, but the state is fine for me. I tend to paint quite thickly from experience, so I know the outline on the sketchbook um, is light enough for me to cover up. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you have any suggestions or requests for videos, leave it in the comment section down below and I'll take it into consideration and I'll see what I can do. See you at the next video. Bye!